Hi, I'm KD, and I'm back again with another Brazilian Portuguese learning video. This time, instead of going over phrases and things I've been using, well, I guess I am going over something I've been using. Let's talk about Duolingo. Duolingo is probably one of the most popular apps for language learning there is. Whether it's useful or not, it is up for debate all the time. Some people like it, some people hate it. And I'm here to give my personal thoughts and feelings about Duolingo and do I think it's useful or helpful for anybody trying to learn a language, specifically Brazilian Portuguese. So first, what is Duolingo in case you don't know? Duolingo uh, first came out over 10 years ago, but I don't know if it's exactly 15 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago. And it's an app that uses modules with different exercises, such as like fill in the blank or choosing words, flashcards, some auditory exercises to help you comprehend and learn a language. And because of its ease of use on the phone, it's made it one of the most popular apps to use because you can use it on the go. Second, and one thing I like to point out is that since 10 years ago, Duolingo has changed drastically. Duolingo in the past was very basic. It was like, what is this color? Blue, azul. Mind you, I first started using Duolingo to learn Spanish. Real basic. So when it actually came to usage, being able to speak the language, it was not very useful at all. You can go over flashcards all day, but until you're actually immersed or have any practical learning, then it's not really applicable at all. The way Duolingo is now, at least for the free basic version, they break it into sections and those sections have units. Each unit has five step module in order to complete to go down the path of your journey and progression through learning the course. To me, this is a lot better to kind of show your overall structure, where you're at, where you're going and what you're learning. And also each section and unit have this like table of contents section that goes over what is trying to teach you the objective of this section. So it helps you get that practical component that was missing from Duolingo in the past. This is why I'm learning this. This is the objective. And if I need to learn more, I can just look up this thing specifically to understand this section. Long story short, is Duolingo useful in learning a language? Yes, especially nowadays with them giving you some type of structure and guidance along with the modules and exercises. Do I think a beginner just jumping right in can really learn a language with just Duolingo? No. I think that for me personally, having gone through other steps and trying to learn Portuguese and then going back to Duolingo has been very useful for me because it's more of a practice that I didn't have in other apps to reinforce the, the lessons that I was learning. Unless you have the discipline to kind of go outside of the exercises that Duolingo has is look at the little uh, module explanations they have and do auxiliary learning, then I don't think it's going to be as useful or you can just learn a language straight with Duolingo. Now for anybody that's intermediate, kind of like myself or advanced or just need some practice and they already know generally the mechanics of Portuguese, I think that it is a great app. And if you once used Duolingo and thought that it was trash, you might want to try and come back to it because it can give you that practice if you need it. One of the reasons why I decided to do this video is because I randomly started using Duolingo again. I was kind of bored in the airport. That was about a month ago. I'm on like a 43 day streak. So I'm going to go over this video. I'm going to have it playing like right here or something of a lesson that's in the app. And so you can see how it looks in case you haven't seen it in a while and see exactly how the modules go. For this particular lesson, like I'm on section two. Section one was... I, I did a while ago, tested out of it because that was the one about numbers, colors, and things like that. Section two kind of gets more into prepositions and grammatical things. So as you can see, a it's like some auditory things to say exactly what it's going to be. Canal. And then they can try and focus on what Nella. the lesson's about. So this preposition is uh, Nella or Nelly. Again, I kind of have a good concept and I kind of not speed Nelly. through, but I'm. it's not difficult to get it right. But it does engage me in understanding how to use 
these particular phrases and words so, uh, five in a row you saw that <laughs> i also have the listening exercise and it's like this one and you have to hear to make sure you're hearing it right i think that these exercises here are just to make sure you understand the difference because some things sound the same and they don't want you to confuse because we all know that when people natively speak pretty fast you can easily get confused so and not everybody slows down to talk to you just because you don't understand it kind of helps with that it's just something i like and it kind of keeps going kind of speed through so towards the end of every lesson they get to a point where they kind of crank up the difficulty i guess a little bit and so this one uh it wants you to type it in in portuguese which i type it in obviously wrong because i was thinking spanish for some reason instead of uh portuguese and then i was like oh i gotta put colica is it bota is it colica colica but then you can click on the word and it'll show you what the word means or translates to uh it's not really cheating because sometimes it's you have to know gender they just give you both of them as this as that one so it was like nelly and nella which one is it and you kind of have to put the right one and eventually you know you'll get it right but at least it makes you think about it instead of just you know clicking multiple choice answer and you choose the right one this one I, I i don't know why i blanked and didn't know what insect was but it happens yeah and that's it so finish the lesson and perfect lesson and they try and sell me super duolingo which honestly i'm not sure exactly what it is i think they gave me a, f a free trial and it, you don't get this ad so it so you don't get this ad if you get super duolingo i think that's the main thing but then you get a streak increase and stuff so there it is and it's also worth noting that there are other aspects to the app that i don't engage in that i'm pretty sure would be beneficial to other people trying to learn the language such as being able to connect with friends or family members or any other people is in the community of trying to learn the same language that you're learning and it's always good to have someone else help motivate you to keep going when you are trying to learn a language. I think that's why the whole aspect of the streak is there because as I've said in the past, it's better to learn a little bit every single day than it is to learn a big chunk once a month when you're trying to retain information of any kind, but especially when you're learning the language. So because it has that there, that competition aspect as, as well as the streak, I think that at the very least, at the very, very least, Duolingo keeps you engaged with the language at all times so you don't really drift off too much. So you can't really knock the app 100% when it has that going for it. And who knows, maybe within the social community that you have there, I think they have a section where you can try and maybe find somebody that can help you learn the language, you know? I don't know. I think that, like I said in the beginning, when you're a beginner that doesn't know anything and you don't have any outside plan to try and learn the language, will you use Duolingo and go on a year streak and then magically know the whole language? No impossible maybe not impossible but highly unlikely now if you're somebody who's already engaged or have a auxiliary plan to learn the language and you're using duolingo to try and get additional practice and familiarize yourself with terms that you already know about but want more practice using i think duolingo is a great app there it is my thoughts on duolingo and can it help you learn the language and i think that's it for this video i'm trying to keep these lesson things short and sweet stick and move if you have any questions about my language learning journey and other tools i've used or using duolingo that i may not have covered please let me know leave a comment below if you have any suggestions for me other than things i may have already mentioned that i'm doing or things that you think i'm doing wrong please let me know in the comments below i hope that you like this video and if you like the video like the video subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell and hopefully i will see you in the next one all right ciao kiss kiss beige <laughs>